Hi everyone and welcome back to New Egg TV. My name is Paul and today we have a special guest. This is JJ from ASUS. Welcome JJ. Thank you. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is going over the ASUS line of FM1 boards. That is Fusion Medium 1, which is AMD's new platform for their Lano CPUs. The sockets themselves look like this. They have a little hole in the middle. And uh, FM1 motherboards and CPUs, or what we should say is APUs, have both a CPU and a GPU integrated onto the same chip. Uh, what they're very useful for is uh, media center computers, also gaming computers, and uh, a lot of other applications as well. But what we're going to start talking about first is for the ASUS line of FM1 boards, the consistent features that cover the entire lineup. So not even just the motherboards that we see here, but any other ASUS FM1 boards specifically. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us about the uh, FM1 boards, JJ? Well, um, you know, one, one of the things that we definitely want to discuss, as you noted, is the kind of the consistent elements in terms of the board design. Uh, you know, going back now for a couple of generations in whole for ASUS boards, we've been really consistent about wanting to try to make sure that there's a feature set that regardless of which board you're considering, you're going to get these things. So that you as a user don't necessarily have to worry, you know what, is this board going to have this? Is this one going to have this? Is this one going to have this, right? So um, first and foremost, one of the big initiatives for us was digital power delivery. We launched this actually first on ROG. Um, all the way back actually on the Rampage 3 Extreme and it's gone through multiple revisions, it's gone into our Sandy Bridge boards and now it's actually a, um, fully featured on our Lano series of boards. So every single one of these boards has a digital power design. So that is that Digi Plus VRM. Now what the Digi Plus VRM really offers to the user is just going to be control and flexibility. There's some advanced options that you have not only within the UEFI, but also within Windows. We're actually giving you the ability to pretty much control all the key parts of the power delivery within the operating system real time. So things like load like calibration, switching frequency, phase management, all these options, you can adjust them real time just like you were adjusting them within the, UEF, uh, the UEFI. So that's one key element, is us really focusing on giving you the best power delivery and the control and functionality across any one of these boards. Um, following up, the next initiative is a really big one for us, which is UEFI. We were the first vendor to launch UEFI across the board in terms of an entire lineup series, and we're doing the same thing for the rest of our emerging chipsets as they come to market. So with Lano, same thing. Every single one of these boards has our UEFI, um, both the easy mode interface as well as the advanced interface. So all the options that you would expect are in there are present within there, whether they're specialized fan controls, the voltage controls, overclocking options, um, you know, 2.2 plus terabyte hard drive support. It's all there and it's all good to go in terms of any single one of the boards having that present. Um, in addition to that, we also have small little additional elements that we like to reinforce in terms of giving useful benefits to the user. So these are going to be small characteristics such as right angle serial ATA. Right, all the boards are mimicking, you know, uh, with the exception of the Mini ITX board, right angle connectivity, making it very easy for you to work within a chassis and ensure that you have nice clean cable routing. Um, all the boards all offer front and back USB 3 headers. So that's important, whereas USB 3 is becoming a more popular connection for USB 3 external hard drives, flash drives, um, high definition web cameras, things along those lines. You want to have that type of connectivity available to you both in the back and the front of your system. In addition to that, we have special functions such as what's called our TPU and EPU chips on these motherboards. Um, the TPU and the EPU are two very easy ways that one, you can extend um, operational life, lower power consumption, and lower temperatures on a board via an EPU switch or EPU option within the UEFI. It's very easy for the user. They can just click that, click that switch and that will actually provide an undercurrent or less voltage to the actual CPU. It won't affect actually performance, so you still get the same performance, you're just doing it at less voltage and ultimately with less temperature also because you're reducing the amount of voltage being supplied to the CPU. Um, the TPU switch is the same thing, um, but it's focused at performance. It's an easy mechanism at allowing you to overclock the system and being able to take it from its stock operating frequency to a higher level of, of, of frequency. So just a very easy way for the users to be able to go ahead and increase their performance. But of course, for any of the guys that like to do things the old fashioned way, we still give you the options available within the UEFI if they want to go through that. Um, lastly, one of the other key things that I'd like to touch on is fan control functionality. All the boards at a minimum give you full control over both the CPU and the chassis fan header. So not only are we allowing you to actually control these, we allow you to define temperature uh, targets as well as rotation target controls for each one of these headers. And this is important maybe if you're running push and pull fan configurations or maybe in uh, 
the smaller chassis where you want to be able to control the CPU fan as well as the chassis fan and you want to customize it to your liking, whether you're within AI suite and customizing it within the OS or within the UEFI, you have those controls available to you. So these are some of the consistent elements that are on every single one of these boards. All right. Um, now, uh, for this particular board here, which is the F1 A75V mm -hmm. Pro, uh, and this is a full-size ATX motherboard, again, FM1 socket up there, mm -hmm. uh, also uses the A75 chipset. And uh, are there any special features of this board that you wanted to point out for us? Um, yeah, there's definitely some, some special features on here, but even relative to the segmentation, you know, um, this board is going to be focused a little bit more towards people that are looking for kind of the everyday replacement system. So maybe they're going to be doing some moderate gaming, maybe they're going to take advantage of more expansion, hence the additional PCIe as well as PCI slots. Um, as well as LANA support for hybrid crossfire, where of course you could put in like a 6670 and combine the graphics performance of the APU with that discrete GPU, giving you an increased level of performance. So that's how this is a little bit more uh, focused towards that type of, let's say, entry level gamer or desktop user, as opposed to maybe an HTPC user, which might be more benefited from one of these smaller form factor systems. In terms of what you have available to you here outside of the expanded connectivity, is going to definitely be more fan controls as well, right? Where normally on this kind of budget level, board, you usually don't have as much fan connectivity where we have one, two, three, and then four headers. Um, on most of these kind of boards, usually at the price point, you're usually only going to have maybe two, maybe three headers. So offering four gives you quite a bit more control and flexibility at setting up your system. And three of those are the four pin headers. That's correct. Uh, in addition to that, outside of the front and back USB connectors, we also are offering a seventh uh, SATA 6G controller via our AS Media implementation, so that's giving you some flexibility in terms of having, you know, whether it's an ODD or a secondary external device connected as well. So this is a, a nice startup uh, board for somebody that's looking to, like I said, get en entry-level gaming or desktop usage. All right. I'd like to quickly go over the I.O. on the back. We got mm -hmm. four USB 3.0 ports, PS2, DisplayPort, HDMI, optical, uh, also VGA and DVI out. There is an eSATA port there, a couple USB 2s, gigabit Ethernet, as well as 7.1 channel audio out. Yeah, and that gives you pretty much all your connectivity that you have available to you there. All right, let's move on to a slightly smaller board here. This is the F1 A75M Pro, mm -hmm. a micro ATX motherboard. Uh, very similar in a lot of respects to the full size one. Yeah, but still while being very rich. I mean, if you look at the level of connectivity that you're affording, you're still getting the back USB 3, you're still getting the front header, you're still getting two um, by 16 uh, PCIe slots, even though they're not fully electrically by 16, but you're getting the expansion connectivity, you're getting three fan headers, uh, you get those TPU and EPU switches that we discussed, um, as well as you even get other special elements like the Memo K button, which is present on these boards as well, which is a nice fail-safe a compatibility mechanism that we have so that for users that potentially maybe run into memory compatibility issues, whether it's from an upgrade or maybe from overzealous overclocking, they can just quickly press that button, it'll resync those parameters back to safe values and they can get back up and running without any issues. So it's a great board for somebody that's also maybe looking to build just maybe a standard everyday box, maybe small form factor entry level gaming system, as well as a great platform for an HDPC as well. All right, and uh, again for IOs on the back, we got all four USB 3.0 ports, PS2, HDMI optical, DVI, VGA, again the 7.1 gigabit LAN. Yep. All right, let's move on down the line to what's becoming one of my favorite form factors because they're just so cute. <laughs> <laughs> this is a mini, mini ITX version. Uh, this is the F1A75i Deluxe motherboard. Again, still we got the FM1 socket for Lano CPUs or APUs, and uh, why don't you tell us a little bit more about this board? Yeah, DJ? this board is still actually quite impressive. Even though it's a small package design, we're still doing a lot here to really showcase performance and functionality. For one, as we noted, we're still including the digital power design, which is nice because even from an overclocking perspective, you're actually going to be able to have the same type of performance that you would even have on this ATX board because of that digital design, and you get the flexibility of still having those real-time controls. In terms of connectivity, you still have quite a bit of connectivity for such a small board. So for one, we have Wi-Fi integrated on the board. And we can see here, here we actually have the Wi-Fi connections. And we're a little bit different than most vendors. Instead of using the standard stick antennas that you provided, which generally are kind of sometimes obstruct with some of these other connection ports, or in the back of kind of an installed chassis environment, they're a little bit harder maneuver. Maybe you're not going to be in the most ideal position 
for or receiving radio reception, we actually give you breakout modules with a lengthier cable so that you can go ahead and position these. And they even have actually magnetic connections so that you can go ahead and affix them to certain points uh, in your maybe HTPC setup so that you can go ahead and get the best reception possible. Very nice. Now looking as far as some of the other connections that we have on the board itself, we're still giving you four uh, serial ATA uh, connections, which is great. Even within a, an HTPC, that's still giving you the ability to run up to four hard drives connected, so you have a lot of flexibility there. We give you the four four pin, excuse me, uh, the two four pin fan headers, so you still have chassis support as well as the fan support. In terms of the expansion, you can still see that we're still giving you a by 16 slot, so you still have the ability to put in a discrete GPU or maybe an advanced TV tuner or a number of different options, and of course, full DIMM support for any one of the standard DDR3 modules that you would look to run. All right, and uh, finally, a quick look again at the input outputs, a couple USB 2, a couple USB 3. Uh, more, I'm guessing, USB 2. Are yep. those the higher power versions? Uh, these are standard USB 2 ports. Standard USB 2 ports, I yep. bet. Also, we have an eSATA port there, DVI. Again, those uh, uh, connectors there for your antenna. Mm -hmm. Optical audio out, uh, also HDMI display port, and then your standard audio outs. And we can also see that we actually have a clear CMOS button as well here. Oh, and go. in addition to that, this special module is actually very special. This is actually Bluetooth, but not your standard Bluetooth 2.1. It's actually Bluetooth 3.0, which is the latest high-speed standard. So for the latest generation of smartphones that actually support Bluetooth 3.0, you get ultra-fast um, communication speed so that you can go ahead and take you know your photos, you can take videos, stuff that you have on that and easily transfer it over. And of course it also serves for connections for like a keyboard, a mouse, or other types of Bluetooth enabled peripherals. Um, in addition to that we also have a special software package that we have built in that allows you to do special functions like calendar syncing, address syncing, you can even do tethering. If maybe you were to turn this into a small form factor gaming box, you could take maybe your 4G enabled phone and tether your internet through the BT and have this be able to get online. So quite a robust little platform giving you a lot of functionality. Who needs a laptop for mobile gaming? Yeah, no, definitely. And uh, rounding out one of the last special characteristics here is actually a specially included remote. So this actually gives you uh, the ability that if you were to utilize it like an HTPC, uh, you can go ahead and type in your favorite web addresses, you can sync up with social media, make quick text through the net, whatever it might be. And when you flip it the other side, you've actually got Windows-based function controls, whether it's powering on the system, doing Alt-Tab, uh, play and pausing media, raising the volume, a lot of different functions. So we're including this with this unit, and there is an RF transmitter that you just attach to the USB port, and you're good to go. So a great little board giving you a lot of functionality for whatever usage, whether it's a small form factor gaming, everyday box, or an HEPC. And that's going to wrap it up for today's video. Once again, this has been the ASUS line of FM1, that is Fusion Medium 1 motherboards for AMD APUs, also featuring the A75 chipsets. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and of course, once again, we've had JJ. Thank you very much for stopping by again today, JJ. Thank you for having me. If you'd like to see more videos just like this one, please head over to our Newegg YouTube channel, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you'd like to hit up JJ to ask him questions or just sort of, you know, see what kind of guy he is, you can head over to the ASUS ROG forums at ASUSROG.com. For Newegg TV, we will see you all next time. Have a wonderful day.